Since 2010, there were 14 cases of indirect equity transfer which have been publicized in official media and a total of over 1.7 billion RMB of withholding income tax was collected by the PRC tax bureaus. Apart from these 14 cases, we also know that there are many other cases being challenged by local tax bureaus, which have not been publicized. It's worth noting that in most of these cases, the indirect equity transfer transaction was detected by the local tax bureaus through various public sources and tax audits, instead of voluntarily reported by the seller. The SAT has become aware that Circular 698 and China's GAR rules may create uncertainties to foreign investors in various areas, including its applications to internal group restructurings with genuine business purpose and the cost base for computing the gain on the indirect equity transfer. As such, we understand that the SAT is working on a draft supplementary circular to clarify various issues, including the possible introduction of a safe harbor rule on internal group restructuring, the method to determine the cost base, and also a list of unfavorable factors to guide the local tax bureau to assess whether the transaction will likely be subject to GA challenge. One very important point to note for the determination of the cost base is that the SAT may not allow the buyer to step up the cost base to the purchase cost for future disposal if the former seller has not reported the indirect equity transfer transaction in accordance with Circular 698. This will certainly have a very significant impact on the private equity market, and we expect that in the future, more buyers will force sellers to report the transactions in order to step up their cost base for future disposal of their investments. This case was picked up by a division of the SAT during a round of tax inspections in Liuzhou of Guangxi province. The taxpayer in this case is a domestic Chinese company which had invested in the Asia's company before it went public. This company gradually disposed of the Asia's after the expiry of the locker period. In January 2013, local tax bureau issued a notice to collect business tax amounting to about 13 million RMB in respect of the capital gains. Apart from this case, we have also come across similar cases in Shenzhen, Jiangsu and Shandong, where the local tax bureaus challenge on non-financial enterprises in respect of the disposal of A-shares which were first acquired as non-tradable equity investment. These business tax cases arose mainly because of the amended regulations which took effect from 1st January 2009. In the past, only financial institutions were subject to business tax on the trading of marketable securities. However, the amended business tax regulations have extended the scope of business tax payer for the trading of marketable securities from financial institutions to all taxpayers, including non-financial institutions. Having said that, in the absence of clear rules on how business tax should be computed, we consider that there is room for taxpayers to negotiate the cost base to reduce the business tax liabilities. Instead of adopting the original purchase price, of the non-tradable equity, which is usually at a lower price, taxpayers may consider negotiating with the local tax bureau for a higher cost base, for example, using the IPO price or the market price at the day of expiry of the lockup period as the cost base. We expect more and more local tax bureaus will try to enforce the collection of business tax on disposal of PLC listed shares by pre-listing investors. This business tax issue is relevant not only for domestic entities, but also for foreign entities, especially those foreign private equity funds 
that have invested into the Chinese companies as pre-listing strategic investors. So, it is equally important for those foreign investors to stay on top of this issue and even to proactively discuss the situation with the local level tax authorities. Otherwise, the business tax issue may delay the investor's plan to repatriate the sales proceeds out of China. With the inception of the corporate income tax regime from 1st January 2008, the transfer of equity shall be conducted at fair market value for tax purposes. However, there were still equity transfers, especially those among related parties, conducted at cost or net book value, resulting in a smaller or no taxable gain. The tax authorities are paying attention to the valuation of equity transfers. There are various reported cases where the authorities have investigated equity transfers and successfully collected significant amounts of additional tax revenues. In addition, to facilitate the examination of equity transfers, the SAT has allocated additional resources to this field in order to build stronger expertise on valuation in relation to tax enforcement. In particular, the SAT and local tax bureaus have arranged several internal technical sections on the topic of equity transfer and valuation for taxation purposes. Currently, according to the Corporate Income Tax Administrative Measures for Corporate Restructuring, a taxpayer has to give evidence relating to the fair market value for share transfers. I understand that the SAT is in the process of drafting new tax circulars on clarifying the documentation regarding related party share transfers. In view of all these latest developments, the valuation of equity has become very crucial for a defense against possible challenge on related party equity transfers. So, for companies planning any related party equity transfers, management should consider engaging a qualified professional valuator to perform a valuation so as to be well prepared for any possible inquiry from the tax authorities. Thank you.